You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Two road games, two different results. Straight ahead of the Red Zone, we break down a frustrating night in Wichita and a fun one in Riverside. Head coach Dave Rice is in studio talking hoops. Plus, a look ahead to a huge week as UNLV gets back-to-back -back games with Pac-12 schools. We preview Arizona State and Arizona. And he's the highlight reel machine that does more than just dunk. Derrick Jones Jr. on his vicious slams and the search for a nickname that sticks. It's the holidays, so we're stuffing ourselves with 30 minutes of UNLV basketball in the red zone right now. This is the Fox 5 Red Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Good evening. Welcome inside the Red Zone. Thanks for dropping in. Kevin Bollinger alongside Runner Rebels head coach Dave Rice. Two road games, finals. This is a week that coaches are glad to get behind them, I would assume. Busy week. Uh, final exams all week long. A big week trip to Wichita State and then uh, the Riverside trip on Saturday. So uh, productive. I thought we got better. Disappointed with the outcome at Wichita, but came out better because of it. And then a very good victory against a good Riverside team on Saturday. Well, let's start looking back at the week. We begin with Wednesday night's showdown at Wichita State. Wichita is one of the toughest places to play in the country. The third longest home winning streak as fans created a raucous environment inside the Coke Arena. The Shockers half court defense seemed to rattle the Rebels right out of the gate. And on the other end, Wichita was getting inside. Zach Brown with the hoop and the harm and Fred Van Vliet with the drive for the lay-in as WSU broke out to an early 8-2 lead. UNLV answer, Dwayne Morgan to Ben Carter for the lay-in. Van Vliet showed why he's one of the country's top guards, hitting back-to-back -back threes and then the circus shot to force a UNLV timeout as the lead expanded to 22-8. Jalen Poyser provided a spark with a couple of three-pointers. Then Jerome Seegers finds Steven Zimmerman for the slam and Jordan Cornish to Zim for the left-handed flush. Still, the Rebels were down 31-22 heading into the locker room at halftime, shooting just 37%. The Rebels did a better job of getting inside to open the second half. Seagares drives for the lay-in, and the next trip down, Ike Wamu drives to do the same thing. There were some defensive lapses. The inbounds feed to Marcus McDuffie for the slam. But UNLV fought back. Zim with the bump in the bucket. Then Pat McCall with the steal, and he heads the other way for the lay-in to cut it to six. A key sequence of the game. McCaw drives. He gets the basket, but it's waved off on a very questionable offensive foul call. And on the other end, Van Vliet gets a lay-in for a five-point swing. The Rebels had another run in them. McCaw gets the loose ball in transition, feeds Wamu, who throws it down. Then McCaw knocks down a triple to cut Wichita's lead to three with just under five minutes to go. But UNLV gave up too many offensive rebounds down the stretch, turned the ball over in key situations, and didn't get any calls to go their way. They held the Shockers to 37% shooting for the game, but they just could never get over the hump as Wichita gets a 56-50 win. Uh, it was tough. Uh, the arena got pretty loud. It was hard to, you know, call our plays and get into what we need to get into. So guys kind of were a little scrambled. So it was a, it was a difficult place to play. I don't want to say they wanted it more than us, but because you know we obviously wanted it really bad, but that that might have been it. Uh, they they were working really hard, and, and there was a couple plays that you know a couple loose balls, stuff like that, that that we didn't get to in time, and and uh, it's a game changer. Let's start with Wichita's in-your-face defense, because that seemed to really rattle the Rebels right out of the gate. We had a tough time getting going. Uh, we got off to a bad start, no doubt, especially on the offensive end. But I thought our defense kept us in it. You think about for the game. Uh, we shot a higher percentage from the floor, a higher percentage from three, and a higher percentage from the free throw line. But we just couldn't get enough sustained offensive plays in the game. But I was proud of our fight. We hung in there, had a chance at the end, and just came up a little bit short. Fred Van Vliet is so good. He does so many things. He, he's really one of those players 
that you, you kind of just have to contain, but that's really hard to do. He's a special player. There's a reason why he's a preseason All-American and will be a postseason All-American. The Baker's very good. they got a good team and a great home court advantage. But again, I was proud of our resilience. There were three or four times in the game that the game almost got away from us, but we kept fighting and kept staying together. And even though we're very disappointed about the outcome, we're better for the experience, and uh, we look forward to, to moving forward and making great progress. Yeah, there's no harm in losing to Wichita, and a game like this can really pay dividends, not only because it was a, a tight game that you guys had a chance uh, to steal maybe on the road, but one of those uh, road situations and, and physical type games that you're going to see a few times in the Mountain West. We're playing a very challenging non-conference schedule as we always do and, and every game comes down to the wire in those kind of games and it just it gives you an opportunity to learn, to grow, win some, hopefully not lose too many and this is just a situation where we didn't quite get it done, came up a few plays short. We're disappointed but we can learn from it. There was plenty on film to see that was good plenty on film that wasn't quite so good and I think it'll help us moving forward but again very disappointed with the outcome we had a chance to win and just didn't make quite enough plays down the stretch things much better on Saturday night as UNLV made the trip to Southern California to take on a pesky and much improved UC Riverside team A sea of red took over the SRC arena as hundreds of UNLV fans made the trip south on I-15. They were rewarded with a stellar effort by the running Rebels in the first half. Ike Wamu with the penetration and the kick out to Pat McCaw for the three to get things started. Dwayne Morgan with the steal. On the break, he misses, but Wamu there for the follow with authority. Ike followed with a three. Then Jerome Seagares with the steal. He heads the other way for the bucket. Ben Carter goes baseline for the reverse lay-in to make it 14-7, and that's when Derrick Jones Jr. entered the game and things got a little flashy. Jordan Cornish drives. Jones flies in for the follow slam. Steven Zimmerman picked up his third foul just 10 minutes in, which put Carter on the floor for extended minutes. Here, Carter works the nice give and go with Seagares for the bucket. Then Jalen Poiser pokes it away. That gets the Rebs running. Cornish with the alley-oop to Jones. <laughs> then Jones follows with a triple. And even when he misses, he's there to clean up the mess. But he wasn't done. The feet in the lane and the thunderous slam. Jones with 12 at the break as UNLV went into the locker room with a 40 to 26 lead. The second half started promising as the lead was built to 18. Wamu with the steal and McCaw finishes it on the other end. Then Carter gets back-to-back -back buckets to go down and he gets the rejection to trigger transition. Seagares gets two and things were looking good. But Riverside made a big run thanks to Taylor Johns who scored at will as the Highlanders got within striking distance. Every time though the lead was in jeopardy, the Rebels responded. Morgan with the rejection to lead the break. McCaw with the hoop and the harm. Then McCaw gets bumped at 10 feet and he puts it off the glass for the and one. Zim gets a big bucket down the stretch and down low to extend the lead to eight. And Carter put an exclamation point to slam the door shut. He had 15 and five boards. McCaw had 17 points, eight rebounds and seven steals as UNLV leaves Riverside with a 73-62 win. Teams go on runs. It's part of basketball. It's a game of runs. And that run was a little bit longer than we wanted it to be. Um, but I think the way we stop it is defensively. I think guys feed off each other. Um, once I'm ball pressuring and I see I, you know, deny and get a steal, then that makes guys want to play, you know, even harder defense. And that makes the big guys want to get out and run, you know, and transition. That's, that's when we're at our best. So and our defense is a big key to that. Dunking is just something I do. It's, it's not who I am. It's just something I do. I mean, I do a lot more than dunks, but a lot of people label me, label me just a dunker, but that's what they see. And, I'm going to just keep doing that. Once again, Pat McCaw was outstanding. He does the little things that make the engine run that people may not notice. Almost had a triple-double, including steals. That's 18 points, 
uh, eight rebounds and seven steals. A phenomenal. He just does all the little things, makes all the right basketball plays, and is a great teammate. The energy on both ends of the floor, especially in the first half, uh, I, you could see in warm-ups it was going to be a different kind of game from this team. They were hyped up. I talk about it all the time. I was extremely proud of our response. Difficult loss at Wichita State where we made just a few too many, a few we needed to make a few more plays to win that game, didn't quite get it done, but our response was phenomenal. Knew and shoot around the day of the Riverside game, we were going to be good. We came and we were focused, we were together, played a really good game, played a great first half, started the second half well, had that little stretch in the second half which let the lead slip a little bit and then finished the game great. Really proud and I have to say, Run Rebel fans showed up, hundreds of Runner Rebel fans, there was red in the building, can't say enough thanks to the Runner Rebel fans who made the drive down to, to Riverside to help support us. It meant a lot to our team. Yeah, it was 70% of the crowd Runner Rebel fans out there. It was very loud in that arena. There was that little lull midway through the second mm -hmm. half. How do you make sure that something like that isn't something that shows up on a consistent basis? I think a big part of it is we're 10 games into this and we're making progress and I'm proud of the fact from beginning of the season to now we've gotten better every game. We're still a work in progress. We think we have a good basketball team. We think we can have a very good basketball team. And it's one of those things. Play hard, play together in every possession. Guys who start the game play hard, then the guys who come in do their part and just stay together. And we'll keep getting better. But I think it gives us plenty to work on. But I'm really proud of the progress we're making. It was a great team victory, great response with a tough week with final exams and a midweek trip to Wichita. And ended well and a tough week coming up. Challenging week, but again, Runner Rebel fans were fantastic to come and support us at Riverside. It meant a lot to our team. Zim gets three fouls in the first 10 minutes, and that means that Ben Carter had to go big minutes on uh, Saturday. But he's one of those people that you don't really worry about when he's on the floor because you know he's going to take care of what he has to do. Ben does whatever is needed to be done, it's similar to Patrick McCaw. And obviously, Steven Zimmerman is extremely important to our team. He's playing extremely well. And I, I thought that Dwayne Morgan gave us great minutes. And everyone that came in the game off the bench did a great job, from Jalen Poyser to Derek Jones to Jordan Cornish. You mentioned Ben Carter. Tyrell Green's helped us as well. Just love the fact that we got a team that's together and working hard and getting better. We're just getting started in the red zone. Up next, you just heard Coach talk about it. We're going to preview this week's games against two teams expected to be in the mix in the Pac-12, Arizona State and Arizona. We're back in two minutes. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Two big games this week against Pac-12 schools, one at home and one on the road. A look now at what the running Rebels are up against as they tip off with Arizona State and Arizona. Wednesday night at the Thomas and Mac, Arizona State rolls in fresh off a loss Saturday at Kentucky. Last year, UNLV had a 15 point first half lead in Tempe and then fell apart and lost by 22. Both teams are distinctly different this year. Herb Sendek is out as head coach and Bobby Hurley is in. And the former Duke star has already bumped up the points per game average by seven. Four starters returned from last year, but Hurley doesn't have a lot of bench, which could come into play if it's a fast-paced, in-your-face game. We're not super deep. We, we have nine guys available. So, um, you know, that being said, I have a lot of confidence in what I'm seeing from all nine of those players. The Sun Devils have bought into Hurley's tenacity on defense to try and trigger transition. And they're a team that could be tournament worthy come March. This will be a good test and gauge of progress for both squads. On Saturday, the Rebels travel to Tucson to take on a much different Arizona team. New faces and key injuries. Most notably, Caleb Tarzuski have Wildcat fans nervous about this one, especially after last season. UNLV knocked off the then third ranked Wildcats in front of a raucous Thomas and Mack crowd that stormed the court. It was Arizona's only non-conference loss in three years. Don't think the Rebels are sneaking up on anybody this time. Head coach Sean Miller will pound home last year's results and point to this game as not only revenge, but a catalyst in their quest for a fourth Pac-12 title in seven years. As usual, defense will be the key to everything. Arizona is in the top five defensively in the nation. Offensively, Ryan Anderson has been a low down low. And once again, UNLV will have to go into a hostile arena against a team that rarely loses at home. Arizona hasn't dropped a game at the McHale Center in their last 44. 
Arizona State on Wednesday night at Thomas and Mack, and Bobby Hurley has his team playing really good basketball right now. They're talented, they're experienced, and probably as much as anything, they're tough. And so it'll be a huge challenge. You need to get Runner Rebel fans and the Thomas and Mack Center. Runner Rebel fans were so great at the MGM when we beat number 15 ranked Oregon a Friday ago. And so Runner Rebel fans have made a difference. The crowd support's been, been great, and it'll be a huge challenge for us against a very good Arizona State team. We know the fans will be fired up with Hurley and the Duke connection uh, as well. What jumps off the tape when you start looking at Arizona State that's going to be a key for the Rebels on Wednesday? They're a great offensive rebounding team. It has to do with their toughness and we have not defensive rebounded the ball as well as we need to this year. So between now and Wednesday, we've got to do a better job of getting ready to defensive rebound the ball. They're very skilled offensively, but they're tough. And I keep saying that and it's a credit to their coaching staff, to their program and their players. And, and we, we've got to be tougher. It's, uh, that one's going to be a fun one to watch. So will Saturday down in Tucson. And this is a little bit of a different Wildcat team than we saw a year ago at the Thomas and Mack. It's a ranked Wildcat team that's going to go to the NCAA tournament. They play tremendous everywhere. They play great at home. They've won 44 in a row at home. By the time we play them, they'll have played two more games. And Sean Miller's one of the best coaches in the country. It'll be a huge challenge for us, but we're excited to play. And another marquee game on our schedule, just like Arizona State is, like Arizona is. And it's the challenging schedule we're playing, and, and for good reason. It gets us ready for conference play, and, and uh, we want to see where we are. How much does the Wichita game going into that environment at the Coke Arena on Wednesday night help in terms of, of going into the McHale Center, which is such a tough place to play, for your players to get ready for that environment? Well, I think there are a couple factors. Number one, you think about Wichita, you think about Arizona. They're two great basketball teams, and then you throw in the, the home court environment that they have, and it makes it that much more difficult. There's a reason why they have great success at home, and certainly going to Wichita State and losing a close game, but being right in it till the end will give us some confidence. Again, disappointed about the outcome, but we were right there, just a little bit short. I think it'll serve us well, but it'll be a huge challenge in Tucson on Saturday against a great Wildcat team. But again, first things first, Arizona State on Wednesday, and we need the Runner Rebel fans to show up and support like they've done all season long. We're very grateful for that. First post-rodeo game, so get out to the Thomas and Mack Center on Wednesday night. He was quickly becoming a player that the fans really have on the edge of their seats watching him straight ahead in the red zone. We're going to sit down and talk with Derek Jones Jr. to talk about his dunks, a nickname, and why he's found a family right here in Las Vegas. This hair-raising play of the week is brought to you by Vegas Valley Hair. The Rebs running in Riverside. Jalen Poyser pokes it away to start the break. Jordan Cornish to Derek Jones Jr. for the slam to bring the Rebel faithful to their feet. Cornish provides the alley. Jones provides the oop for the hair raising play of the week. You're watching the Fox 5 Reb Zone Sports Show, presented by RC Willie. Your home, your way. The Slam Man, Mr. Dunk, DJ Puffin Stuff, <laughs> call him what you want. We're the ones that remember that, right? The over 35s, I remember the HR Puffin Stuff. You can call Derek Jones what he's want, but he's fine just being called Derek. He is quickly building a reputation with his show-stopping rim rattlers. For him, it's just part of his role in the Rebel family. Derek Jones Jr. has quickly become a fan favorite thanks to some spectacular dunks that have dropped more than a few jaws. This Jordan-esque throwdown against Shamanad in Maui was Sports Center's top play of the night, and it lit up his phone. I had about 175 unmissed, unread messages. But Jones says he doesn't set out to deliver highlight reel dunks. They just happen. If the opportunity presents itself, then then I'm going to take it. I'm not going to let it just go. His moves have people trying to find a nickname for him. So far, nothing has stuck, and Jones says that he's fine going by the name that his parents gave him. But he is open to one, as long as it's good. You can't be stuck with a bad nickname on I me. Mean, if, if I get a bad one and it sticks and I don't like it, I mean, I'm going to see if they could change it. But if not, then, hey. It's just a nickname. I mean, I, my first name is on my birth certificate. My first name is after everything I sign, so the nickname isn't there. I mean, it's just something that people call me. Jones isn't comfortable with all of the attention that he's been getting, saying that he's a team first guy because his teammates are his family. The players that I play with, I call them all my brothers because we all brothers on the court and we all brothers off the court. We all got each other's backs. I'm going to go out and get my heart out. And, 
do whatever I can to get my team to win. He gets the attention for the dunks, but Derek Jones does a lot more than dunk. For good reason, he gets attention for the dunking, but he's a very good basketball player, extremely coachable, and a great young man. And along with Steven Zimmerman and Jalen Poyser, three extremely coachable freshmen who are going to be high-level players at UNLV. We're looking forward to watching him throughout the year. We're going to take one final break. We're back with some final thoughts from Coach Rice and the Plays of the Week. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Coach, good luck this week. Thank you. Huge challenge, great opportunity. Two big games. We hope to see you out of Thomas and Mac on Wednesday night. Thanks for joining us in the Rev Zone. Here are the Roman Rebels Plays of the Week. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie. Your home, your way.